So that's the alternating series test. But similar to the integral test, the alternating series test gives us a way to estimate the remainder of a partial sum. This means, like the integral test, we can use partial sums to approximate the true sum of an alternating series and measure how good that approximation is. The remainder estimate goes as follows. If the alternating series test indicates a given alternating series, sigma sum of negative 1 to the n b sub n, converges, then the error, or remainder, r sub n in using the nth partial sum to approximate the total sum of the series is bounded in magnitude by b sub n plus 1. That is, the magnitude of the remainder is at most the magnitude of the first forsaken term, the first term that you're not adding because you're stopping the partial sum at the nth term. To understand why, let's take another look at our dot plot of an alternating series. Let's say we stop computing the series at, say, this green dot. Now consider what happens if I add one more additional term. Remember, a key feature of these plots is the green dots are going down and the red dots are going up. That means, whatever the sum of the series is, it can't be any lower than whatever the latest red dot in the sequence is. And since the green dots are going down, it means that the sum cannot be any higher than the latest green dot. Thus, whatever the sum is, it has to lie somewhere inside this gap. And the size of this gap is given by the difference between the latest green dot and the latest red dot, which is precisely the length of this red arrow, the first forsaken term. So that's the remainder estimate and an explanation for why it works. Now, before jumping into the examples, I feel I should review something real quick, which I expect a lot of you, but not all of you, are familiar, and which you'll need for the examples. And that is factorials. The factorial of a number is denoted by placing an exclamation mark after the number. So five factorial would be represented like this. The way you compute it is, you multiply the number by all of the integers below it until you reach the number one. So 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And for a generic integer n, n factorial is the product of n with n minus 1 and n minus 2 all the way down to 1. 